Maps are a visual that can be used to great effect in roleplay. I also have a Twitch channel. Head on over there for more roleplay advice and other fun stuff. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about maps for your roleplay. Humans are visual creatures, so sometimes it can be important for your roleplay to represent certain things in a visual medium. For example, I recommend visuals for your advertisements. I recommend using face claims or photos or some kind of art for your character descriptions. I recommend creating a Pinterest or mood board for your roleplay groups to explain things like tone, mood, technology level, look and feel of locations, and things like that. All of these recommendations are things that can be described in words, but I recommend using images because they can communicate these things much more clearly, and that helps ensure that everyone's imagining similar things, so that they're all on the same page and they're not accidentally contradicting each other in their roleplay posts. But visuals can also be limiting. Once you put something in a visual, it's much more concrete, so your imagination can kind of be limited, which means that you need to use visuals with caution. So what about maps? Maps are a visual that can be used to great effect in roleplay. However, maps aren't completely necessary, and because of the limiting factor of visuals, I don't recommend them for all or even most roleplays. However, there are certain situations where I do think maps are critical to the success of everyone imagining things in the same way. So let's talk about those things. If you have a detailed combat system, Maps are critical in ensuring everything remains consistent and fair. Knowing where everyone is during a fight ensures that everyone knows if their character is at risk, so they're not going to get totally blindsided by a sneak attack or feel like something that was done against their character was cheap. Now, if you do combat in more of a like plot it out with your partner and then write it out, then a map isn't really necessary because you're handling the fairness in the plotting phase beforehand. But if you have a system with stats or dice or a combination of those two things, then a map is really helpful. Yes, now it is still possible to do combat in the theater of the mind in stat and dice systems, but if you've ever tried it before, you know it's kind of difficult. Now, these maps don't have to be super detailed. All you really need is some kind of grid or hex with certain important things marked on the map, like if you're inside, where furniture is, doors, stairs, things like that, or if you're outside, where water, trees, etc. you know, important things for outdoors are. And that's all you really need. So if you have this type of system for your combat, I recommend using a map. Otherwise though, it's not necessary. If your roleplay has travel time between different areas, a map is a super useful way to communicate this. It ensures players have an understanding of the scale and scope so that they can wrap their heads around why the travel time takes as long as it does. Now, that being said, I don't actually recommend a text-based roleplay group where you have slow travel time or mechanics of that nature. I explain all of this in my world building video, which I'll link up in the card for you to go check out. But if you do have this mechanic in your roleplay, then a map is helpful. Except for those two situations, I don't actually recommend taking the time to create a map. So I'll give an example of when you might feel compelled to make a map, but I argue it's actually not necessary. Let's say you have a town roleplay. It might make sense to create a map of where the different locations are in the town. However, you can easily get around this by dividing the town into sections. When I do this, I usually base these sections on the direction, so I'll have like the north, south, east, and west side of town. Then different buildings, areas, houses, whatever will exist on these sides. Knowing vaguely what side of town something is on lets players know what things in town are close to each other and what things are far from each other, and in my experience that's really all players need to know. 
And in fact, for this type of situation, I find that drawing a map can be very limiting because once you lay out visually where everything is in the town, now all of a sudden you can like run out of room and not add new locations as the roleplay grows and changes where those locations might be fun or useful or necessary for the roleplay to progress. So I recommend using the sides method instead of drawing a map so that you're never limited into what you can add to your town later on. So if you do need a map, being able to draw it, of course, is the best situation because then you can draw things out exactly how you want them. However, in a hobby where the focus is on writing, not all of us are visual artists. So the best place I think to get maps from, if you can't draw, is to look at free resources for Dungeons & Dragons. Kind of basic? Yeah, but D&D is the most popular tabletop game, so if you Google for that, you're going to find the most stuff. So Google and get to searching for a map that'll work for your roleplay. Now, this map doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly what you imagined. It just has to communicate what you need to communicate for your particular situation that you're trying to set out for your roleplay so that your players can understand why certain things are the way they are for combat and for long travel times. So do you guys use maps for your roleplay or do you tend to skip it like I do? Let me know down below. I'm really curious. Really, those two situations I talked about are the only times I favor using maps. Otherwise, I just describe it or work around it somehow. Uh, and it's because I can't draw. So <laughs> that's the tea there. So let me know your situation when it comes to maps for your text-based roleplay down below. I'm so curious. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.